Welcome to Counters. Today we are having a conversation regarding business finance and obtaining a business loan. And I don't think um, there is any better time than now where this question is being asked more than ever for obvious reasons and uh, what businesses have been going through, uh, and especially with the recent events in our own country. Uh, we are glad to be joined by Daniel from Bridgement, and uh, we're going to hear more about their business and the business funding that they offer. And uh, hopefully after this, we'll be able to see um, why they would be a business of choice to partner with when it comes to obtaining a loan. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us, and it's good to have you with us. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Kadip. Yeah, really good to, to be here with you today. And obviously talking about a topic that's uh, so important in this uh, in this day day and age and uh, in this economy. So yeah, good good to be here with you. Yes, uh, and yeah, just to start us off, uh, please tell us a bit more about Bridgman and how it started and uh, how many years it's been operating for and uh, yeah, how it's grown over time. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, Bridgman, in a in a nutshell, is a fintech business, which is a financial services technology business. Uh, and essentially what we do is we simplify access to funding for small businesses in South Africa. So we have a variety of uh, uh, different uh, products, uh, f uh, funding products for businesses, business loans, invoice finance, uh, credit facilities or lines of credit. Um, and ultimately our focus is to just simplify and make it much easier for businesses to access those sorts of funding online. Um, I started the business back in 2016. Uh, I'm actually an engineer, so I don't have a, a financial background. And uh, I came from the world of tech and data science. And, you know, in 2016, I was looking at the state of SMEs in South Africa and small businesses and how difficult it was to access funding. And I thought, you know, surely there's a better way to do this and to simplify it and to use technology and data science to, to do that, to make it a lot easier. And yeah, that's pretty much how uh, I ended up starting uh, Bridgman. So it's been since since 2016. Uh, we took investment uh, uh, around 2018 from uh, a group of investors called Capricorn, and they've been amazing uh, shareholders and partners in helping to scale the business. Um, yeah, and uh, we've just continued to to grow from uh, strength to strength over the last few years. Wow, uh, interesting to note. I didn't know it was 2016. Yeah, it seems like you guys have been here for a while. So, um, mm. yeah, when, when looking at small businesses, and I'm sure many of them will be uh, watching this, um, they would want to know what they need to consider. So maybe uh, if you can tell us about that, what do they need to consider when assessing available options for funding? What, what do they need to bear in mind? Mm. Because uh, many just ask the question, where can I go to and how mm. quick can I obtain the funding? It's a good question. I think there, there are a few different layers or levels uh, that that you sort of need to think about it uh, when, when we talk about funding. So, you know, when we talk about funding, funding can mean many different things to, to different people. Yeah. Uh, it could mean debt funding. It could mean equity funding, like, you know, selling shares in your business to an investor. Um, and it could also mean grant funding, like government grants that don't necessarily have to be paid, paid back or, or sometimes they uh, serve as like soft loans or things like that. So there, there obviously are a number of different types of funding. We obviously specialize in the debt funding space. We do business loans and we do credit facilities and we do invoice finance, all sort of falls under the, the, the debt umbrella. Uh, we don't do equity. So we're not like a an investor. We're not a a venture capital company or a private equity company that invests in businesses and and looks to you know get equity returns and that equity obviously the investment typically doesn't have to be paid back um so we don't do that i think you know in terms of a, a business when they're looking at obtaining funding uh they really need to consider all their options and they need to think you know what are the debt options what are the equity options and what are the grant options and for different businesses and at different phases or stages of their life different options will apply and will be relevant. So for example, a brand new business that hasn't begun trading, that's just getting up and running, um, typically won't be able to get debt funding from any reputable financial institution, whether it's a bank, whether it's a, you know some other alternative credit provider, or if, even if it's a fintech like Bridgement, uh, typically a brand new business that hasn't started trading won't be able to get debt. And a lot of the time, 
uh, businesses will ask us, well, why? Why, can't, why won't you give me a loan to, to start the business? And the reason really comes down to it's, it's a matter of risk. Uh, you know, when, uh, when a financial institution provides a loan to a business, they determine the risk of providing that loan mm -hmm. and they charge interest for, for taking that risk. And the problem is, is that with a brand new startup, uh, that risk is really high because many startups fail, as, as we know. Um, and so a business that hasn't begun trading, uh, the risk profile is typically really high. And that would mean that a, a high interest rate would be required. And it actually be, gets to a point, you know, you can't have such a high interest rate. It gets to the point where it's just not practical. And so there, typically, uh, equity would be more relevant. And now, of course, there are many different types of equity and different ways that you can raise uh, funding from investors, you know, it could be an angel investor, it could be a venture capitalist, private equity, it depends on the stage of the business. But if you had a, the early stages before even starting, typically, you're going to be talking to either angel investors or family and friends. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and maybe you'll be lucky, maybe some family and friends might be willing to give you a loan instead of taking shares in your business. Mm -hmm. But typically, most people will look to take shares in your business because of the level of risk that they're, they're taking on you. It's a, it's a bet, they're yeah. taking a bet on you. Um, so that's one of the key things that I always like to highlight to businesses. We have lots of brand new startups, um, you know, approaching us for funding and we have to explain to them, you know, you, you're better off looking at, you know, raising some like sort of equity funding, uh, getting an investment from an angel investor or family and friends, which is how most startups actually get up and running, uh, assuming you're not able obviously to, to fund it yourself. Mm -hmm. And but which most people aren't. Uh, the third option, of course, is also grants, government grants. So in South Africa, you know, there there are many different grants that are available. Some that are just almost like free funding. Others that take equity in your business. Others that are like soft loans that are maybe interest free or very low interest and with a very long term. So I always encourage people to to explore those. And obviously, you have to uh, the criteria to get those is sometimes difficult, and the paperwork can sometimes be a bit tedious, unfortunately, because you're dealing with government, but sometimes that is a great, another great option for earlier stage businesses to obtain funding. Sometimes uh, uh, it, uh, government will only allow that funding to be granted to businesses of certain sizes um, or that have a certain level of traction or don't have traction, it obviously depends, or, and even industries. So they sometimes have a different focus on, on various industries, um, but it's really important to sort of understand the different types of funding and the roles that they play so that you know where to look. Um, and in terms of those government grants, there's obviously many different options. You know, you have the the the, the IDC, um, you have CIFA, you have um, the the the, um, the name just escapes me, but, but there are a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, um, government uh, bodies and institutions that offer these sorts of grants and, and startup funding. So it's important to understand all of those. When it comes to to debt um, and, and looking at a business loan um, or some other type of credit uh, um, for a business, there are, are a number of different products that cater for differing needs of a business. And sometimes those products are specific to an industry or specific to a size of a business or specific to the actual need that a business might have. So some of the really important things that it's worth considering when looking at um, you know, uh, the, um, any sort of uh, credit for your business or, or debt for your business, I should say, is one, you obviously need to always consider the repayment term. That's really important. You need to know, you know, how long do you have to put the, the, these funds to work and to still and pay off the, the, the loan. Two, obviously, you have to consider the cost. Um, that's not just the interest rate, but oftentimes, and you'll see this with banks and other financial institutions, will be, other fees, lots of fees that are added over and above the interest rate. And sometimes those can be quite substantial. So it's really important to understand the full total cost of, of the finance. Um, uh, the flexibility and accessibility of that funding is really important. So, you know, do you have to take all the funding on day one or do you have a facility that you can access over a period of time? Does that end? What happens when it ends? So really understanding that flexibility of it. I think also worth considering um, what happens on early settlement. So let's say you take the funding, but now your business shoots the light out and you don't need the funding and you need to, you want to early settle to save on the fees or the, the interest. So some institutions might penalize you for doing that. 
And so it's important to consider, you know, what happens on early settlement and do they treat you fairly? Do they penalize you or not? Um, also, an, a really important one is, uh, you know, w w is any security or collateral required? Are they going to take personal surety for you, from you? Those are always important things to, to consider. Many small, small businesses, especially earlier stage businesses, don't, uh, typically don't have security or collateral to obtain funding, which is a large part of why uh, banks struggle to give them uh, debt funding uh, because banks are so heavily reliant on security, on collateral. Um, and, and of course, you know, signing personal surety is, is always something that uh, one needs to be aware of and consider when, when taking on uh, um, uh, uh, any sort of debt funding. Well, no, thanks for highlighting those. Um, I think uh, it's about time we go beyond just asking uh, how much am I paying per month and what is the mere interest rate? I think there's so much more to consider as you have mentioned and highlighted. So what, what, what do you think are some common mistakes that are made by small businesses when applying for funding? What have you seen uh, as Bridgement? Mm. So uh, de definitely one of the, the, uh, uh, the most obvious things which I've touched on already is... Um, First of all, a business applying for the wrong type of funding. So a business that hasn't begun trading um, or it's like a brand new startup coming and applying for um, debt funding, like it, you, it's just uh, any reputable financial institution will not provide uh, um, debt funding to such a new business. So I think getting you, your head around the right type of funding. So first, like applying, uh, you know, thinking about is am I, do I need debt? Do I need equity? Should I be looking at government grants? If debt funding is the right answer, then it should be looking at, okay, what are the terms that I need to solve the particular problem that I'm trying to solve in my business? Is it day-to-day -day working capital that I'm trying to solve here? Do I have a little cash flow problem? Are my debtors taking long to pay? Do I need to buy inventory or stock? Um, you, you know, it could be any of those things. Do I need to buy a new expensive piece of equipment or um, some sort of asset or even a vehicle that you need to pay off? Um, how long would you expect to pay that off? Will your cash flows support those repayments? Those are all really important things to consider. So some of the mistakes we see is, you know, you know, businesses applying for the wrong product um, and not, you know, they, a business coming to us and applying for uh, um, funding to buy a truck uh, is just wrong. And the reason why it's wrong is because we specialize in short-term uh, funding, short-term being anywhere from one month up to 12 months. Um, but, you know, typically uh, vehicle finance, you're going to pay off over five years or sometimes even longer. And so, um, you know, the, the paying off a truck with uh, over 12 months is just too short a term. So I think it's really important considering, you know, the, what is it the right product? Um, uh, you know, is this a, a once off need or is it going to be an ongoing need? Does it need to be like a revolving facility or just a once off business loan? So that's really important. Um, we see a lot of businesses requesting too much uh, funding or applying for too long a term. I mean, I touched on applying for a term that's too long. Uh, you, you have to understand that different terms, uh, different financial pro uh, credit providers offer different terms and uh, different use cases require different terms, um, but also requesting too much. So, you know, one example of that is, you know, sometimes a business will come to us um, that's doing, let's say, 2 million Rand annual turnover but they'll come and apply to us for a 5 million Rand loan, just to, to make it an extreme example. That's never going to happen. Uh, it's important for, uh, sometimes uh, uh, expectations are completely uh, um, mismatched and businesses don't understand that, you know, a credit provider is never going to give you multiples of your annual turnover. Uh, so that's a really important one. And a rule of thumb that we sometimes tell clients is, you know, the, the maximum that we would ever grant you is like two months worth of revenue, absolute maximum. But obviously, there are many factors that come into play that determine what credit limits you might be able to 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 get. So I think that's a, a really important one. Um, obviously, your credit profile of your business and your and uh, yourself personally and any other directors in the business is, is really important. And if there are any negative marks um, on your credit profile, it's worth doing everything in your uh, abilities to go and resolve that. And there are a number of ways of doing that. Um, but it's really important to try and keep a clean credit record. And if anything happens to try and uh, resolve and, uh, and, and clean that up over time. Um, the other important one is just, it goes back to the, 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 what I've mentioned already around startups applying for funding. So we often see businesses coming to us and applying with insufficient track records 
um, or trading history. So, you know, we require a minimum of six months trading history. A bank typically will require like more than three years. But, you know, we sometimes we'll see businesses coming to us with one or two months of trading, three months of trading. Maybe they haven't begun trading, but they've got a big purchase order. Um, you know, unfortunately, we can't fund those businesses because we need to see a, some trading history because we use that to assess. And if, and if there's no trading history, we can't assess. Um, so, so that's a, another big one. Um, a, quite a common one we also see is businesses that have too few customers um, or like a single debtor, one large customer that makes up their whole business. That to a credit provider represents a very big risk because what happens if that debtor disappears? Uh, you know, do you still have a business? Will you be able to find another customer if you lose that big contract with that one customer that's keeping your whole business up and running? So debtor concentration or customer concentration is a big one. And typically you want to uh, show that at least you have a, a few customers and not just one large one that drives your whole business because otherwise it's a very big risk. Um, also businesses that are over indebted or, or that don't have affordability, that's a really important one. And so, um, uh, you know, typically a credit provider will only want to provide uh, funding to you uh, responsibly and only if your business can afford that funding and that you aren't already over indebted. So, you know, businesses that are too highly geared or have too much debt in their business, um, uh, you know, that uh, that can also be that's sometimes a, a mistake that we, we see uh, um, some businesses make. Wow, uh, a lot of factors that uh, need to be considered. And I think you touched on the next question that I was about to ask. Uh, but specifically for a business which is already operating and is looking to get funding and specifically maybe looking at bridgement, uh, what are the funding options that are available for me as a business if I'm considering coming to you for funding? Yeah, uh, uh, it's a good question. I mean, I think the obvious one is, is banks, right? Everyone, the default that everyone thinks about is getting funding from their banks. Unfortunately, they have the strictest criteria. Uh, they have the, the lowest risk appetite and they usually have the, the, the most strictest like, requirements in terms of requiring collateral uh, or security and you know, a very long trade history of at least three years or whatever it is. So um, you know, that, the, the first option is always the banks and we always encourage customers to, to try the banks. Um, they are also typically quite difficult to apply to and require a lot of paperwork and, and so sometimes that can also represent quite a barrier to accessing that funding, especially if you need that funding you know, quickly to solve an, an immediate need within the next day or two. Um, the second option is uh, you have what are referred to as uh, alternative credit providers or, or um, traditional like non-bank uh, uh, credit providers. And these typically tend to be very small institutions, sometimes even private individuals that um, uh, sort of on an ad hoc basis uh, lend money to uh, companies. Uh, those are those are good options. Uh, they tip, typically have less uh, strict criteria than the banks, but usually because it's a small operation and it's a small business on the side, and they don't have a big like they don't have all the infrastructure that a bank has with all of the you know the staff and the systems to be able to process uh, lots of uh, applications and things like that. Those those sorts of uh, uh, alternative credit providers will usually uh, focus on larger transactions over longer terms because they can't afford to do like small transactions over short terms because it's not profitable really enough for them. And they, and they have such a sort of manual process of assessing clients. Um, and then lastly, you have uh, what are referred to as a FinTech funder like Bridgman. Um, so Bridgman is not a bank. Uh, we are a credit provider who provides uh, um, credit to businesses. And really what our strength is um, compared to a bank is that we are a tech first business. So we are, everything is completely online. There's no paperwork and a, a, a large portion of the assessment is all automated, which enables us to get decisions on applications really quickly. Our average is under 24 hours from the time of completing an application compared to a bank that might take, you know, three to five weeks. Um, and our, our record is actually 90 minutes. Uh, so we've, we've been able to find a client uh, within 90 minutes of them completing their application online. That means the funds were in their account. And, and that was a brand new client that we had never seen before. It wasn't an existing client. So um, it's, it's really in our strength and, and our requirements are typically less. So we don't require security. We don't re require collateral. So you don't have to worry about that. 
Uh, we only require six months trading history at a minimum. I mean, many of our clients have a lot more than that, than that but we do have some earlier stage businesses that have only been trading for six months. So that is, uh, um, uh, um, so those are some of the, uh, uh, um, the, the differences between a, a FinTech credit provider like Bridgement and, uh, and like a traditional bank. Now, of, of course, all the, those three different types of, of credit providers, banks, alternative non-bank credit providers and fintech uh, fintechs like Bridgement um, have different products. Um, so, you know, your bank will offer you overdraft and term loans and, um, you know, many other products. Uh, Bridgement does business loans. We do revolving credit facilities for ongoing working capital needs. And we do invoice finance uh, if you're struggling uh, or having issues with late paying debtors or, or clients. And you have unpaid, lots of unpaid invoices. Um, so, so, you know, there are many different options in terms of those different products that are offered by those different institutions. And it's worth obviously navigating that and understanding which one is, is really right for you and your, your, your needs at the moment. Yeah, thanks for highlighting on those. And I think you also touched on my next question. Uh, and that's the burning question when anyone looks at any service provider. What are the minimum requirements that I need to meet when applying for funding with Bridgement? And you mentioned yeah. six months um, trading history. Um, what, do, what, what, what can I show you to, to prove that I've been trading for six months and what else do I need? Mm. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, so, so it is a, uh, the, the sort of bare minimum requirements are a uh, minimum of six months uh, trading history, as, as we've touched on already. Obviously, the more the, more the better, but, but if you have six months at least, that, that, that's great. Uh, we like to see a minimum a minimum annual turnover of about five hundred thousand rand, but but usually you know most of our clients are doing a lot more than that. I mean we have some clients doing a hundred million a year, um, but we really yeah we have a, a broad range. Majority of clients are doing you know five, ten, fifteen, twenty million rand annual turnover, but at a minimum you know we're looking for about five hundred thousand to a million rand annual annual turnover. And then of course it also has to be a formal business, so you know we we can't unfortunately fund informal businesses it needs to be a formal and when i say formal i mean a registered company or like a close corporation or an incorporated or you know any of that some of the, the other entities that uh, are available there so those are some of the 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 minimum requirements there, there are many other factors that we assess but those obviously are, are um run in the background and those are uh, uh, revolve around background checks um and affordability and uh, over indebtedness and things like that um, so, so there are lots of other checks, but at, at a minimum, those three things are, are probably the, uh, uh, the most important uh, criteria for us. Uh, and, and, and we also only fund businesses in South Africa. So we currently don't fund any businesses that are, are, are non-South African. Okay, yeah, I, I think that was clear enough. So what is the, I mean, when someone considers funding, and especially, I mean, there are so many uh, people online who would say, I provide small loans, I provide biz um, business loans, uh, I can give you funding. But one of the fears with many businesses with going with any other uh, alternative service provider is, uh, is the issue of trust. Uh, can I trust them? Is there yeah. an issue or are they going to be uh, taking me for a ride? And that is why you always go back to traditional banks. You're like, this has been uh, widely known, this is what has been widely used and it's something I can trust. So what makes Bridgement yeah. different from your traditional banks? Why should I consider uh, Bridgement as opposed to your traditional banks? It's a good question. So I think there are a number of factors, but the first one is I want to talk about uh, trust. Um, and, it, it, you know, in, in terms of that, I think uh, it's a really good point. And business owners are 100% uh, right in that they should be be, be careful because there are, um, you know, some less uh, or unscrupulous um, credit providers out there that um, it, it probably would not be a good idea taking funding from. So I think uh, it's a really good point. Um, in terms of, of trust, so there are a few things. Um, Bridgman is one of the uh, um, members that has helped create and run a, an association called SASFA, which is called the, uh, it stands for the South African SME Finance Association. I was actually the chairman of SASFA um, over the last year. And that helps to define a set of rules and a code of conduct for SME credit providers in South Africa. Um, to ensure that there, that um, responsible lending is done, uh, to ensure that uh, SMEs are treated fairly, um, and you know everything is, uh, is done transparently, pricing is done transparently, and 
and all of that. So that that's one of the things. The second thing is, uh, uh, you know, I often find it useful to look at, you know, who who's the people behind the business, um, and you know, who's the investors, where's uh, where's all the the funding coming from at the end of the day. Um, you know, we our funding comes from a, a very reputable company called Capricorn, um, who's an investor in the business as well. And Capricorn is an affiliate of a larger group called Yellowwoods, which are the owners of Hollard Insurance and Nando's and Clientel and Lombard and Budget Insurance and a whole host of companies. So it's quite a big group. So, you know, typically I, I find it quite useful to look at like who are the people behind it because like, you know, if they're reputable, you can somewhat trust, um, you know, that the companies that they're investing in are reputable. The, the third thing I would also mention is look at online ratings. That, that is always a, a telltale sign. Um, so if you go and look at uh, search for Bridgman on Google and you see our, uh, uh, our Google ratings, uh, you'll see that it, it's all extremely positive. I think our, 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 our rating is like 4.95 or 4.99 out of 5 or whatever it is, uh, a very high uh, and very positive uh, rating. And you'll see some of the stories and the comments from uh, some of our customers, which is a, a great way to see, you know, like, is this a company that you want to do business with or not? Um, to go back to the rest of your question around what, what what makes us different and what are some of the differences between us and traditional banks. So first and foremost is, as I've touched on already, we're fully online, we're fully paperless. We're not going to ask you for documents and for, you know, to print stuff and sign it and to uh, send a whole bunch of uh, documentation. It's really, really simple application process. It takes two, less than two minutes and it's completely online. The second thing is our turnaround times are way quicker. So we can get funding to within 24 hours, as I mentioned, record of 90 minutes, because we have such a strong technology platform and have such a high degree of automation in terms of those assessments. Um, another big difference is, as I've mentioned also previously, we are willing to grant funding to earlier stage businesses. Typically banks will not fund you if you uh, until you have at least two or three years of trading. We only require uh, six months. Um, we also, one of the things that we pride ourselves is that we, we have put a lot of effort into making our product products really simple and easy to understand with very transparent pricing so that you always know the total cost of the finance that you're getting from Bridgman. It's very different to a bank where you have to read through a 200 page PDF to understand all the different fees that you might incur or you might not incur if you use a facility and there's the interest rate and there's the raising fee or the application fee and the legal fee and the admin fee and the monthly account ongoing facility fee even if you don't use the facility like there's so much complexity in all of that and Bridgman does away with all of it we have a single fee which represents the total cost of finance um, every time you withdraw funds from your facility and that's it if you're not using the facility you're not paying anything so we don't uh, a lot of larger institutions and it's not just banks uh, in insurers are typically the worst with this sort of stuff they intentionally obfuscate things and they intentionally make things more complex than they have to be because people just get lost in the detail. So we don't do that and we make it really, really simple. Um, yeah, uh, and I think lastly, uh, early settlements. Uh, touched on it already, but many traditional institutions like banks will typically penalize you when you try and settle early. And um, you know, with us, we actually reward uh, you by discounting the remaining portion of your, your uh, fees or interest on the finance that you have from us when you settle early. So I'd also look at how they, a big difference is how we treat customers uh, that want to settle their funding early. We, we'd rather reward them instead of penalize them. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, I think that highlights it. I think you also mentioned about Google reviews. I checked you guys out on Google and it was quite impressive to see the 4.9 in the stories that um, were given by uh, many of, uh, of the clients that have come um, through uh, Bridgman. So, um, yeah, you touched on the funding uh, that Bridgman gets. Um, where does it get its funding to be able to fund its clients? And I think you touched on that. Would you, is there anything else you'd like to add to what you've mentioned? Yeah, I, think, uh, I don't think there's much more to add on that. We, we get our, our funding from investors in the business uh, and also from third-party asset managers and, and insurers out there that have big balance sheets that are looking to, to deploy their funds and uh, earn a return on them. So we get to get funding from all of those institutions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, please touch on uh, a bit more on, on, on how you incorporate uh, accounting softwares when, um, you, mm. uh, are, when clients have to consider getting funds and the process that it takes. Mm. 
That's a good question. I actually didn't mention it yet, but one of the ways in which we make it simpler for businesses to apply for funding is that if you're on a cloud accounting, you can, at a click of a button, connect your accounting package, whether it's Xero, QuickBooks Online, Sage, um, and that enables you uh, enables us to import all your financial information and basically pre-fill the whole application for you and removes the need to submit uh, or enter in any any other details on the online application. So it makes it a much simpler and e even quicker process. We're currently, Bridgman is currently the only SME credit provider in South Africa that has integrations into Zero Sage and QuickBooks. Um, and so that's part of what makes us a FinTech, the, the usage of those integrations into the accounting platforms and leveraging that data to assess you and your credit worthiness and to, to grant funding in a, in a quicker way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think worth mentioning, we always, uh, always worth mentioning that we cater for all businesses. So if you're not using cloud accounting, that's not a problem. Yeah. You can still apply, but if you are, you have the option to connect your cloud accounting really easily. Yeah, no, that was quite interesting to hear when uh, we were at the webinar, how it integrates to accounting software. So uh, as we close off here, um, how can I reach Bridgman? And uh, by the way, we'll leave the links to um, the website in the description below. Um, where do I start when I'm looking for uh, funding and I'm ready to go to Bridgman? Yeah, um, so everything is online um, and you can go straight to our website, which is www.bridgement.com. Uh, and yeah, uh, you can just follow the steps there. You'll see there's a big apply now button. Uh, or if you want to read more about the company and how we work and all of that, that's also on, on the website. Um, that's the best place to start. Um, and then if you want to apply for funding, click apply now, follow the steps, completely online application, really easy. And uh, we always have you know, our customer support that's available to assist if you have any questions or, or need any help with anything. Yeah, and you can also, by the way, reach out to contacts if you'd like assistance with the process of applying for funding through Bridgman. Daniel, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate uh, your time with us here and hopefully we'll have a long-standing relationship as we connect you with many of our clients and followers. No, absolutely. Caleb, really nice to, to chat with you today on something that I'm really passionate about and that, as I mentioned, is, is so important in this day and age. Um, yeah, re really good to chat and uh, uh, looking forward to continuing to work with you and uh, all your viewers in helping SMEs access the funding that they need. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, have a good uh, day ahead and uh, yeah, hope to chat soon again. Definitely. Thanks, Caleb. Cheers. Eh? Thanks. Cheers. Bye.